show the world what I see when I look at Veronica May. Hello dear viewers and welcome to another marvelous video. Andrew LaPamardo here and today we're going to talk about the Joker's daughter, Dula Dent Origin Explained. So sit tight and let's get into it. The DC Comics have introduced many weird and insane characters throughout its run, often using the insanity as a crutch for the character's villainous tendency. Dula Dent, aka Joker's daughter, was introduced as one such totally crazy character. Her alias has less to do with her parentage and more to do with her delusion. There's a level of duality to as you may have already guessed from her name. She is often seen going against several good guys and yet she wants to be one of the good guys herself. Her intentions might always be unclear, but one thing that we do know for sure is that she is a huge liar. It is hard to figure out her truth, because she just comes up with new, skewed facts about herself every now and then. A few revelations have been made here and there, and in the New 52 continuity, she officially becomes part of Batman's rogues gallery, finally stepping into the side of complete evil, instead of reveling in her duality. Dula Dent's truth seems to be submerged under her insanity. However, in this video, we will try to make it all simpler. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. <laughs> Joker's Daughter origin in the classic comic. Dula Dent is notably a villain and a part of Batman's rogues gallery, but she has also served as a member of the Teen Titans as well as the Titans East. She has had multiple aliases, the most renowned one being Joker's daughter. She has also adopted other monikers such as Catgirl, Harlequin, Card Queen, Riddler's daughter, Scarecrow, and Penguin's Daughter. These titles are a form of wordplay with reference to other Batman villains. In pre-crisis continuity, Dula Dent made her first appearance in the Batman Family comic book series as Joker's Daughter. Robin took notice of her, and she later went on to claim that she is the daughter of other Batman villains, such as the Riddler, the Penguin, Catwoman, and Scarecrow. She ended up discovering Robin's identity, and finally revealed to him that she was Dula Dent, the daughter of former District Attorney Harvey Dent, or Two-Face, and his wife Glinda Dent. Creator Bob Rosekis chose Two-Face to be her father instead of the other villains because he's the only villain who was married. Apparently, Harvey, who loves duality, was unhappy with her being a single child and not a twin. He even named her Dula to play on the words duel or duality. She wanted to atone for the crimes committed by her father, which is why she wished to be part of the Teen Titan. Naturally, the idea was not favored by everyone, but it still took off. Sometime during Teen Titans number 48, she changed her alias to Harlequin. With this, her fighting style also changed as she switched to weapons such as bullet firing lipsticks and smoke inducing powder puffs. The Teen Titan comic books eventually got cancelled, but Dula Dent was too interesting of a character for the writers to write off. She was subsequently made to appear in the Batman titles, this time under a new name, Card Queen. Here, she was infiltrating a criminal organization known as Maid. Her last appearance in the pre-crisis continuity was in Tales of the Teen Titans number 50. She appeared as a guest at Donna Troy's or Wonder Girl's wedding. Here, she was a middle-aged matron. Around this time, Robin realized that Dula, who looked middle-aged, was too old to be Harvey Dent's daughter. She agreed to his deduction, but before he could actually get to the bottom of it, she disappeared. In the post-crisis continuity, she appears for the first time as a delusional schizophrenic. Her moniker is Harlequin from the get-go, and she has been in and out of numerous mental institutions over the years. Here, Dula Dent is an acrobat. She possesses several clown motif gadgets as well. However, her true identity is not revealed. She appeared as a patient in a mental hospital in the Teen Titans comic book. In this arc, the writers wanted to present her as a time-traveling member of the Teen Titans group who went insane after experiencing time warping. As cool as this may sound, the writers could not venture towards this direction, mainly because this series got cancelled. 
A final issue for Team Titans was released and it solicited a story that commented on why the series got cancelled. In this story, Dula Dent stole a reality altering device. She then shifted New York City into the late 1970s. Her real identity is finally revealed. It is a bit complicated though. Her father is the jokester, the Joker from Earth 3. Meanwhile, her mother is Evelyn Dent, also known as Three Face. The Riddler from Earth 3 happens to be her stepfather. Evelyn left the jokester during her pregnancy, which is why he never knew of Dula, not until she became a teenager. She was raised by Evelyn herself with no help from the Riddler. How she ended up in the mainstream universe remains a mystery, but after meeting the Joker, she started referring to herself as the Joker's daughter. Technically, she really is the Joker's daughter, but her Joker is not the one who inspired her. Origin in the current comics. In the New 52 continuity, Dula Dent is a psychopath. She lives in the underground sewers of Gotham City as a tribal leader. She goes by the alias Joker's daughter and has a relatively strange goal. She wants to prove that the women of her tribe are better than and superior to men. She also has a twisted viewpoint when it comes to beauty standards. Ugly is the new beautiful for her. Dula Dent was born in the suburban areas outside Gotham City. Her parents were a happy couple, but her birth stirred things up. Her parents, particularly her father, grew uneasy right after Dula's birth. Time went by and Dula grew to become more and more strange in the worst ways possible. As a child, she would commit acts too sinister for a child, which reflected the cruelty in her. Once, she trapped a spider in a light bulb. On another day, she used barbed wire to create a corset. When she was 12 years old, she adopted an ugly dog. Her father did not approve of it and threw it out. In her defense, there's nothing wrong with the dog being ugly, so all points to Dula. She was also obsessed with knives and even made herself a mobile using knives. She would let it hang over her bed as it would lull her to sleep. One day, she deformed her entire face with a box cutter. She wanted her appearance to match the ugliness in the world as she loved ugly for ugly's sake. When her parents learned of this, they immediately took her to the hospital for surgery. She resisted the procedure of being fixed which botched the surgery. Half of her face was now deformed, much to the horror of her parent. However, Dula loved her new ugly appearance. She began to think she was flawless, which makes sense for her as ugly is beautiful in her eyes. Her parents were appalled by her personality in general and argued over it. Dula overheard their conversation and ran away from home. She reached Gotham City, where she searched for an underground society called the Nethers. This society resided in tribes in the sewers of Gotham. While searching for them with her pet cat, she discovered the Joker's face. His face had fallen off during the time that the Joker presumably died, in the death of the family arc. Initially, Dula mistook the face for her own reflection. She later took the face to the doll maker, a serial killer who created dolls using the limbs and skins of his victims. He attached the Joker's face on top of Dula's own face. She then injected vials of the Joker's blood into herself to connect with him and refused to believe that he was dead. She began to strut around while donning his face. She murdered people and destroyed property, hoping to catch his attention someday. When Dula saw a nearby couple where she assumed that the man treated his partner unfairly, she asserted her power over them while wearing that mask. She did not hold back her anger against the man, and the couple mistook her for the Joker, thanks to the mask. Terrified, they surrendered to her quickly. Dula had a half-moon piece of metal. She asked the man for the location of the tribal leader, and with the piece of metal, branded his face with a smile. Several women from the tribe then escorted her to their leader, Karen. The leader referred to her as the Joker's daughter and welcomed her to the tribe. Despite the welcome, Dula Dent retaliated by attacking him. He overpowered her with ease, making her realize how she had made a mistake by assaulting. He then offered her to be part of his tribe once again, but she did not want to be like the other women in the tribe. 
so she refused to succumb to the men. Karen was intrigued by her and asked her the reason for her scorn. To answer him, she fabricated a story and lied to him about having a happy childhood and how disgusted she was because of it. Karen did not believe her story, and rightfully so. Eventually, Dula caught him off guard and branded him with the smile. The other men of the tribe then urged Karen to hand over his power to Dula, but Karen noted that she is trying to gain control of him the same way the Joker had. However, Dula still came out on top as she won the tribe over. Karen was sent away and Dula's plan of proving the supremacy of Ugly was finally put into motion. Dula Dent has also served in the Suicide Squad, where she would constantly get into arguments with Harley Quinn. Her behavior eventually got her kicked out of the squad. She then returned to Gotham City and found company in Arsenal and Red Hood. Strange facts about Dula Dent. Dula Dent is quite the oddball. Her story and origin lack definitive details about her age, heritage, and, at times, her intention. The ambiguity is essentially a part of her character because a lack of solid facts allows her to manipulate the truth however she deems necessary. And it brings up several questions in the minds of the fans. But here's what we know. She wants to be a superhero. Once, she had claimed to be the daughter of Doomsday. There's no way that's true. You would guess that for a person who likes to refer to herself as the daughter of supervillains, Dula Dent would be more into being a villain. But no, she wants to be one of the good guys in the pre-crisis continuity. This is why she had joined the Teen Titans. Her father from Earth 3 is a nice guy. The best part about alternate realities is the freedom that allows the writers to venture into. Good guys become the bad guys, such as the Justice Lords, which is an evil Justice League, while the bad guys become good. In the post-crisis continuity, Dula Dent is actually the daughter of the Joker. Surprisingly, the Joker, who is known as the Jokester in Earth 3, is a good guy. Even the Riddler family is a team of superheroes. Dula in The Killing Joke In Batman The Killing Joke, which is an animated movie, the Joker's wife was pregnant. She died in the movie, but the whereabouts of her baby with the Joker were not specified. As his wife was close to her due date, it is assumed that she died while she gave birth to the supposed Dula Dent. She is the second one to use Harlequin as her alias. Before Dula Dent, this alias was used by a supervillain named Molly Catherine Maine. She had an enemies to lovers moment with Alan Scott's Green Lantern. The problem with being the Joker's daughter. Fans have often resented this character, especially the new 52 version of it. The reason is simple. She seems to have little to no personality of her own. Her arcs revolve around her being similar to the Joker and wanting to connect with him. Even her appearance is based off of his. The biggest problem is that the Joker claims to have no daughter. There is no proof as to whether she is his daughter or not, and it's probably one of her delusions. Even in other continuity, the aliases she develops are just her being the daughters of other supervillains. Take them away, and there's not much to her left, which is a shame, as the whole concept with her finding ugly things beautiful and being insane and macabre since birth is very very interesting and could be explored better. Joker's Daughter in the Arrowverse Dula Dent, played by Alessandra Torresani, appears as the Joker's daughter in the CW's Batwoman. The show adds to the character's complexity and develops her character beyond being a supervillain's daughter. She made her first small screen appearance in the 14th episode of Batwoman, in the episode Grinning from Ear to Ear. The inspiration for the new 52 continuity over the other continuities for this character can be seen clearly as she is introduced as a definitive villain. The episode begins with a pretty girl who is being rushed by her mother to get ready. However, she cannot bear her own reflection. She aggressively applies makeup to her face, but then punches the mirror and shatters it. With a shard of glass, she butchers her entire face. When her mother finds her and her now mutilated face, the girl is seen smiling. She then goes on a hunt, 
looking for professionals from the beauty industry and social media influencers who have undergone plastic surgery to become more beautiful as per the beauty standards. Unlike her character in the comic, neither is she seen... Uh, Unlike her character in the comics, neither is she seen bringing up her status as the daughter of a famous villain, nor does she express an overwhelming desire to meet the Joker. Her story here revolves around her vendetta against the society that dictates how people should look. Her mother had forced her into having plastic surgery and she hates her for it. She sees the women in social media who look the way her mother wanted her to and hates them for that very reason. This is where she also becomes kinda morally gray. Of course, her conduct is wrong. In fact, it's terrible, and she is clearly mentally disbalanced. But her reason isn't as crazy as, oh, I want to be like my father. The fact that this unrealistic standards of beauty turn out to be a huge pressure on people stands true. This fuels her pre-existing insanity. The series created her to be a character beyond her regular gimmick and gave her a realistic reason for her crime. Even if the audience cannot relate to cutting their faces with shards of glass and hunting down influencers, they can relate to being pressurized by obnoxious standards. With this arc, Dula Dent was finally able to stand on her own two legs as a character. And if you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Let me down. I'm helping you, Veronica. Oh, <laughs> I mean, Mortis. <laughs>